welcome to the fifth SAT webinar by Elite Home Tutoring. If you weren't here on the previous four webinars, my name is Karen. I am the Associate Counselor here at Plexus. We have with us Christine, who is a tutor from Elite Home Tutoring. Um, she has been tutoring over a decade with SAT Prep, so we are very, very happy to have her here with us. Um, also, if you weren't here on the previous four webinars, we can access those recordings on our Plexus YouTube page. It is called Plexus Social Media. Um, uh, I didn't put in the chat this time, but uh, let me know what you want to major in, just so I can get an idea just like of the diversity in this room and like what you all want to major in to help you prepare for college. I would really like, to, I would really like for you all to let me know. Um, while in this, in this webinar, Christine will be lecturing you all on the SAT reading portion and she will be lecturing you all on strategies. Um, you are free to let us know of any questions you all might have while Christine is lecturing. You can do so by clicking on the chat option and letting me know privately on the private chat. Oh, I have an animation from Catherine. Thank you, Catherine. Um, so yeah, as I, as I was saying, um, you can go ahead and let me know of your question privately um, on the chat. Uh, I am my counselor Karen on participants, or you can go ahead and send your question to everyone so Christine can see it as well. You are also welcome to uh, ask your question directly to Christine by clicking on participants and clicking the raise hand option that is right there. And then that way you'll be able to speak to Christine directly. All right, so Christine, take it away. <laughs> okay, welcome today. It is. Wednesday. Okay, we're on Wednesday. Trying to keep track of the days. And we are going to be looking at the reading section of the SAT test, picking it apart between today and tomorrow. Um, and the reading section is the first section of the test. Most of you will know that. It. Uh, I'm going to pull up a slideshow for you to, to get some basic details. So let me pull that up first. This is the hard part. Okay. Okay. And slide show. Oopsie. Christine, looks like we have a first question. Yes. Um, Athena ahead. asks, what can I do now to prepare for college? Okay. I need to get this up here and answer that question. Okay. Okay. Um, Athena, uh, what what grade are you in? Do we know? Um, Athena, do you want to let me know on the chat what grade you are in? So. Or I guess just in general, like what okay. can if, people if do you, to prepare? Okay, so if you are, um, if you're just beginning high school, that's a very broad question, but you're beginning high school, do a lot of, you know, your first year, lots and lots of reading, read things that are challenging for you, not just the easy stuff. The more you read, the, the easier it will get to read and it'll, easier it'll get to be a critical thinker. Uh, very important take if you're a, a freshman or a, a sophomore and all the way to the end of your, your high school years, but take as hard of classes as you can, mo the most challenging classes you possibly can, challenge yourself and um, get those good grades, get the good grades in them. And don't, don't say, oh, this is only my freshman year and it doesn't matter because the colleges are looking at uh, what classes you're you're taking and how hard they were and what kind of grades you got in them. So um, that's something you can do to prepare for college is, is to be able to prepare yourself to get into a, a college that will be just right for you. Um, by doing a lot of reading and, uh, and challenging yourself even in, in writing, uh, you're going to prepare yourself for college. Be as independent as you can and, and as active as you can in your studies. Don't rely on teachers giving you um, work and, and uh, if you happen to have an easier teacher, don't take 
take it as a free ride and say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in and get this done. Start to prepare for the SAT, uh, the end of your sophomore year, start practicing, and, and then take it at some point in your junior year. Does that answer your question well enough for at least for right now? Because we're gonna go on to the SAT? Probably. Okay. Okay, so um, now Christine, we've got, we have time yeah. for another question. Um, sure. Okay, we have two um, days on reading, so we have we get okay. done. All right. Um, it's not necessarily about the SAT, but we have okay. a question from Catherine. Does a 4.3 GPA make it so it might be easier for them to get into college? Yes. Yes. Right. That's yeah. Right, and uh, hopefully that they're kind of challenging classes. Right. Um, and with regard to that, I will say that if if you can take AP classes or honors classes that that are college preparatory or substitute for college classes. That's the best thing. Uh, that's also a very good thing you can do and uh, get a good solid grade in those classes. It's more important that you get a, a high grade in the classes than what you score on the AP test because the, the colleges don't normally ask you for your score on the AP. They want to see, they want to see the grades. Okay, if there are no other questions, then I will take a look at the reading section strategies. Um, oops, here we go. Okay, first of all, uh, the reading section is 65 minutes for 52 questions. It's good to know the structure of what you're dealing with so you just don't go in cold. Okay, so five passages with 10 to 11 questions each. One of the five will have two separate passages in them and I will show you down the road when I pull up a, 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 a link to a, an actual test. The, so that means that on average, you're gonna take about 13 minutes per passage. Some are faster than others, some are harder uh, because of the types of, of, of discussion, uh, but you wanna average it, okay? The types of passages you're going to get are uh, one, literature, it might be uh, US literature or world literature, it might be from the 1800s or the early 1900s, which can make it very challenging uh, because the language is so different. So it's hard to get the gist of what's going on there. A couple of history or social studies passages, um, and science is usually two passages, broad, broad topic of science. So even though there's no science section on this test, there are science related passages that will, it may even give you a graph or two to take a look at, okay? So that's what you're dealing with and how to practice the reading section. First of all, you want to start by reading the blurb that's at the top, and I'll show you that in, in a few minutes. The blurb at the top uh, to learn what you will be reading and when it was written. You don't want to skip that little three-line blurb at the top because it's going to give you a quick summary of what you're headed into. What's the topic? Is this going to be tough reading? As you practice, you may say, this is going to be from the 1800s. I'm not as good at those. I'm going to leave this to the end. So those are things that you just want to keep in mind as you're beginning to practice or whatever place you are in your practice. You want to look at the blurb, make an assessment, a quick assessment of uh, what you're going to get into before wasting time. Number two is read actively, which I also said for the writing section, that is with a purpose, with a purpose. So no, no passive leisurely reading here. Skim, my recommendation is to skim the passage on the first read through, which is just like two to three minutes. So just a skim and don't try to thoroughly understand every line and don't backtrack. So it's always tempting to go, oh my gosh, I start thinking about lunch. Uh, don't do it. If you just keep moving, keep moving, skim and uh, take it, you know, then, then you'll, you'll just keep going. If you go back, you're wasting your time. You don't need to thoroughly understand the passage, just the parts they're asking you questions about. Okay, the third tip related to being an active reader is to get, get a general understanding of the passage. So when you're reading it through for those two to three minutes. So you wanna notice a tone, what is the tone? Assess the tone, notice this is very active uh, thinking. You're not just casually reading. Again, I can't stress that enough. What's the tone? Is this a, a person's recommendation? Is it a dialogue? Is it a study? Is it a science passage? Recognize the tone and then the other thing to notice in that first read is read the first and last paragraphs a little more carefully. Why? Because when you're writing an essay 
or a past that you put your purpose and you reiterate your main point, your main claim in that first and last paragraph. So those are the ones you're going to take note of to see where your head, where this essay is going to go, where this article is going to go. The third point uh, generally is to time yourself when you're practicing. You have an average of 13 minutes, but I say 12 and a half minutes per passage is good. And uh, and then the fourth note is that there are command of evidence questions, and I will show you what those look like in just a moment here. And those are there are two command of evidence pairs per passage, and we're going to work those together. So let me switch screens, and Karen, you can make sure that I actually the screen doesn't freeze on us. And um, stop sharing for a second. Switch screen. And then share again, a different screen. Okay. And we can, okay, so is this the, the SAT and is it moving? Yes, okay, thank you. Okay, so this is, let me scrub from the beginning of the SAT. This is a practice test too, which I've used in the writing section the last few times. Um, practice test two from the College Board from about three and a half years ago. So this is the beginning of the reading test. And we can see 65 minutes, 52 questions. Um, the directions, very straightforward. Each passage or prayer passage below is followed by a number of questions. After reading each passage or prayer, choose the best answer to each question based on what is stated or implied in the passage or passages and any accompanying graphics, such as a table or graph. You've read that, you don't need to read it on the day of the test. It's not gonna change. Okay, the first passage, read the blurb. Here's the blurb I was talking about, questions one through 10. The passage is from Char Charlotte Bronte, The Professor, originally published in 1857. That's an 1800s passage. The language is gonna be different, expect it. Okay, so that's your first passage. We're gonna zoom through it for a moment. and. Uh, the second passage here, we're going to take a deeper look at this today and tomorrow. Questions 11 to 21 are based on the following passage and supplementary material. This passage is adapted from, by I think it's Jane King, Can Economics Be Ethical from 2013? Okay, so ethics and, ethics and economics. So take in that, that title and that will, oh, there's your graph. The third passage is the dual passage. So this one will be more than uh, one or more questions than the other passages. So passage one is adapted from Nicholas Carr, author Nicholas Carr, The Web Shatters Focus and Rewires Brain. And the second passage, Mind Over Mass Media. I'm not that, it's not that important if I remember to look at author. So they are on the double passage, you are looking at two discussions about a topic. Sometimes, it, usually it's opposite opinions. Sometimes they address the other person. Sometimes they're just a separate top, uh, separate discussion, different opinion on uh, the same topic. Uh, recommendation for this, for the dual passage, is to read the first passage first then go through and answer the questions relevant to that first passage only. Don't even get the other passage in your head. No. Then go to the second passage, read it uh, in the same active fashion, and read the questions related to it. And then finally, read the questions that are comparing the two passages. There's usually about two or three at the, toward the end um, that are comparing the two passages. So you can see in this question number 32, which choice provides the best evidence that the author of passage two would agree to some extent with the claim attributed to Michael in certain lines in passage one. So that's the last thing. So there's a general recommendation about that double passage. And then the next passage is um, 1869. So two older ones that makes for a little more challenge. Women's Suffrage Convention in Washington, DC. So you have an idea that it has to do with voting. And then the last passage, in this case, it's all always very similar, but 
Okay, the last passage. This passage is adapted from Giller Long, a mystery how 500 meter high undersea waves form is, is revealed. So there's your science passage. Okay, and we're gonna go back to the second passage. Any questions while I'm scrolling here? You can address them to Karen. Okay. So I had said that it that in the um, in each passage there's two pairs of command of evidence questions. On your SAT test, when you get it back, they will have a, a category called command of evidence. What those look like are right here. Here's the first one. Questions 12 and 13. We're not going to pick this these questions apart now. You haven't read the, the passage, so we don't have time to do that. That's something I could I would recommend you doing maybe even today when you have a little bit of spare time so that if you have more specific questions tomorrow when we're continuing with reading, you can address those questions. So question 12 says in the passage the author anticipates which of the following objections to criticizing the ethics of free markets. Okay, you wanna be on the lookout for the double passages because you don't wanna try and figure question 12 out without looking at the line references for question 13. Why would you go hunting through the, the passage when you have line references in front of them? And one of these line references has to match up with one of these, one of question 12's, that answers the question. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna do these questions together. I find that when people kind of already have an idea of the answer for the previous question, they're more likely to miss the line reference. So do, do them together, even if you have a general idea where you're headed with it, okay? So you would read lines four to five and see if it matches up with any of the explanations. If it does, does that explanation answer the question? Okay, so that's something that I wanted to point out from the beginning. The other thing to notice here is, and please be taking notes, uh, again, I didn't mention that at the beginning of our time, is that this says which choice provides the best evidence. So you can't stop when you find an a line reference that works. It may be good evidence, but it's not necessarily the best evidence. So you need to go through all four of these line references to make sure you have the best. Okay, so that's their, one of their little tricks that they will throw at you is like, oh, that's decent evidence. I'm, I'm done with that question. No, nope, it's not. It's not good enough. And they also will uh, potentially give you a line reference that matches up with an answer from the previous question, but doesn't answer the question. So just be on guard for those things. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to our other sheet and share again. Okay. Okay. Are we looking at that? Yep. Okay. And it, there we go. So that we had that. There we go. How to practice the reading session section continued. Use a process of elimination, and I got it POE by looking for the wrong answers and marking them uh, off, marking them off. So uh that's that is the key i would say on the reading passage to get that higher score is find something wrong with three answers i can't stress this enough there's only one correct answer so there must be something wrong with the other answers so even one word can make an otherwise good answer incorrect if it's a little bit uh just not in the text so often what you'll see is you'll see an answer that has, you're like, I remember that, and I talked about that. But one word in there is not quite right. And so then you jump and, and you fall into the trap. This test is testing critical thinking. Critical thinkers don't jump because they see, at an answer because they see common, uh, common words that they remember. You go back and you check it, okay? Um, note that the correct answer frequently may be much more general than you expect. So by saying, by trying to prove three answer, answers wrong, you will, that's the surest way to get a better score on your reading section, okay? You, and please jump in if you have any questions or else I'm gonna keep talking. 
Uh, number six, use line references to help you find your answers. So when there is a line reference on the question, go to that line reference and read uh, extensively. I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, to find your answer. And now number seven, carefully notice how the question is asked. Is it a purpose? And according to the author or an inference question. These are all very, very important, careful details. Don't go in blindly. Don't go in passively. You say, this is a purpose question. It's not just saying what's in this passage. It's saying what was the purpose of putting this there? If it says according to the author, then that means that, that I can find it in the passage straight out. Straight out. It's not going to be an inference in any way. So that's good news. The harder questions you leave to the end. Okay, number eight, when possible, try to answer questions before looking at the answer choice to avoid being tricked. So if you have an idea, that's good. Just don't necessarily jump ahead of it. Just, it is good to, if you can do that before looking at the answer choices. The answer choices are designed in such a way as to trap you, and you're supposed to avoid those traps. That's critical thinking. Number nine, notice and avoid extreme answers in the answer choice. This is very similar to what I was saying before about even one word can make an otherwise good answer uh, incorrect. If the passage said something about sometimes something happened, but then they change it to always, but the, say, the rest of the words are, are from the passage, it's now wrong. So notice those extreme answers and say, was it really always? No, it wasn't, okay? Oopsie, back here. Okay, and number 10 is, Continually assess your progress. How, how is my timing going? Did I run out of time? Did I rush? Why did I pick the wrong answer? Was I a careful reader? Very, very important to keep assessing your, your progress. Don't be passive when you need to practice. Um, that one, no. We're gonna do words in context uh, tomorrow. Okay, what to do if you're stuck on a question? Use a process of elimination aggressively. Even one wrong word makes the whole thing wrong. Read more context. So if you, if you go to a line reference and you're not getting an answer, then uh, read a few lines before, a few lines after, and that should help you right there. Don't be afraid you'll, you'll get stuck. Uh, you'll take too much time. If you don't read the context from the beginning, you'll be ending up wasting time. Okay, and then a note about your practice related to the reading section. So always, always time yourself, always. Because you have 65 minutes to finish the five passages, try to finish each passage in under 13 minutes. However, while you're practicing, accuracy is more important than speed. So if you can never do answer the questions correctly um, with, maximum, with as much time as you want, you can never get it done with, a, with less time. So first you wanna do accuracy, then you go with speed. So time yourself. If you need to take more than 13 minutes on a passage, take that time. Take, uh, uh, take that time until you're confident you pick the, the correct answer, then write down your score for your extra time. So if it took you 15 and a half minutes, write it down, say I took 15 and a half minutes. Did I get them all right? Okay, yes. Okay. And then, and then you'll work on timing because there's a lot of repetition in the types of questions you have. So then you're going to be able to, to um, work on your timing, but just like playing a, a musical instrument or practicing a, a sport, accuracy and precision is first, then you work on your speed. Over time, notice which types of questions and passages uh, are the most challenging for you personally and put in extra practice on those passages and questions. So you do want to notice what kind of questions um, are the hardest for you and, and notice what, which, um, notice why you missed a question. Again, that's key. The reading strategies uh, are, are, and methods are, are different than the rest of the test. Uh, some people will jump in and, 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 and just go straight to the questions um, and then look at the, the, the passage. I don't recommend that, but for some people it works. Um, so you have to kind of develop a little personal strategy. Um, I, what I'm giving you today and tomorrow are, are generalizations 
but there is some give and take. You, the main thing is assessing yourself. Why did I pick the wrong answer? Okay. Um, are there any questions? No? Um, I have a question. Yes. What is your favorite strategy? Okay, my, my favorite strategy is to, what I, what I presented, take about two to three minutes to uh, read the, skim the passage, skim that passage, and take special note of the b beginning and end of the passage, so the first and the last paragraph. And I might, um, I might just read the, the main topic sentence of each paragraph and, and take note of that so I know what's in there. There's going to be some transition words that are going to give me a clue as to what's ahead. And then quickly skim the rest of the paragraph, go to the next, uh, the beginning of the next paragraph, read that topic sentence, keep going. Um, and if I, I, I usually do the, the line references, a question, the line reference questions first because they're the easiest to find. Yeah. Right, thank and you. And I think you have another question here. Yeah. Um, are there any other questions? Um, I do have a general question, like um, mm -hmm. that doesn't necessarily have to do with the SAT, but um, that's weird if anybody has any SAT mm -hmm. questions. Please. Reading in particular. Um, yes or no question for you guys. How, how many of you have, uh, have done a practiced SAT test already? So you can just, in the chat box, you can say yes or no. no. Have a yes, yes, no. Okay. Yes, so yes. yes. <laughs> Good. All right. Good. Okay. So then, um, those of you that have done a, some practice, think about uh, what what kinds of questions are the toughest for you, or what what is the hardest part about that reading section for you, and um, have a question ready for us for tomorrow because you're not alone in that. Uh, it might be the timing, it might be that you get down to two answers and then you're like, mm, I can't, um, and then we can talk about those things because that's where. If you're trying to get a nice strong score, as close to, to um, an 800 between the reading and the and the writing and language, then you're going to have to really perfect your your test. You you know this that the test we were looking at, the practice two test, is um, um, if you miss one reading question, you're down you're down 10 points. So that's just a, a very important to know to make note of. And then, um, you have yeah. There's a, a general question. Karen, did you have a question too? Yes, uh, there is a question from Hannah. She mm -hmm. asked, "Is it a good idea to take three AP classes during junior junior year?" If you can get solid grades in them, good grades, yes, it's better to do that. But that means that it's better to to uh, be doing a big chunk of your studying for the SAT um the the summer before your junior year starts so that you can be taking the test in the fall of your junior year because by the time you hit january of your junior year with three aps you're going to be really ramped up and it's going to be hard to to give the have the stamina you need to do a good job with the sat when you're also doing APs. yes okay, thank you and there is a question from Catherine. Yes. For future tutor sessions, will there be a math one? Yes. They will start next week and there will be a lot. Yeah. So let's see. One, two, three, about five or six, five sessions maybe. So we'll break it down into different um, types of questions. The first day uh, on Monday will be basic uh, strategies for the math, working with the answers, that sort of thing. Um, and then we'll take it from there. And I think, Karen, you have a list of, of the order that we're going to go in for that. So I, I have it, but I mean, you can make that available to students as well. So say, I really need help on my trig or on my functions or something like that. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right. Any other last minute questions before we move on to the ending notes? All right, so looks like 
no questions. All right, okay. I'm going to share my screen. Um, I guess put something in the chat. Okay, and present. All right. Okay, so thank you everybody for joining us today on today's webinar about SAT reading strategies. The next webinar will be about the SAT reading as well, additional question types, and it will be tomorrow, Thursday, April 9th at 1.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, we would very much appreciate it if you download our Plexus app. If you download our app, you'll be able to receive instant notifications. We're also very much appreciated if you rate it and review us on the App Store or Google Play. We appreciate any feedback you are able to give us. Also, chat with my counselor if you have any questions regarding this webinar or if you have any questions regarding your specific journey to higher education. We're always happy to help. And lastly, connect with Elite Home Tutoring on Plexus. I put the link on the chat for you all to access it through there. Um, and you'll be able to ask them any follow-up questions you have uh, regarding the SAT, SAT prep, or anything like that. So feel free to connect with them on Elite Home Tutoring. You can also access our profile by clicking on the banner on our Plexus um, page, on the Plexus Newsfeed page. You can access it by clicking on the logo where it says Elite Home Tutoring. All right, so with that said, thank you everybody for joining us. And thank you very much, Christine. We will see you all tomorrow on our next Elite Home Tutoring webinar. Bye, everybody.